We know where that kind of wisdom came from. And of course, the, the love of wisdom, philosophia, philosophy, the study of wisdom, the wisdom of men, the, the clever thinking of man in putting issues together and, and uh, creating various scenarios of thought. You know, there are people that actually go to college to study that. Did you know that? Sure you knew that. You go to the university and study liberal arts, appropriately called, and they have courses in philosophy. They teach things like existentialism, big, fancy, long word, which means that things don't really exist. You just think they exist. They exist because you're thinking it. They teach these students that. That's enough to warp a brain, isn't it? They'll tell them, if you fall down to the floor, the reason you hit the floor is because you think there's a floor there. If you weren't thinking about a floor, it wouldn't be there. They teach those things. But you've got to be thinking it before it exists. And you know what? There's a religion based on that whole thing of existentialism. It's called Christian science. It's mind over matter, and everything is all in the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind. And, of course, in the mind of man, there is the, the uh, will and the emotions also. All has been corrupted by sin. But, you know, these professors that teach existentialism, that nothing exists unless you're thinking about it, I'd like to sneak up on one, get my tennis shoes on, get real quiet, sneak up behind one with a hat pin, and poke him in the posterior and see if he jumps. Because why should he jump if he wasn't thinking about a hat pin sticking him? Right? Okay, just a thought. But this worship of knowledge, that you will have special knowledge, Eve. You'll be like a god. You'll know something you don't know now. See, that curiosity, that enticement of the devil that's there. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, Watch this verse very, very carefully. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, what was she after here? Do you see it? The lust of the flesh. She looked at it, the lust of the eyes. And now I can be wise, the pride of life. You see? She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. See, that's what sin will do. It will cause you to always withdraw and hide yourself from the presence of God if you can. And so they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. They were running through that garden trying to hide. They were naked. They weren't, then they finally made some aprons of fig leaves, but basically, you know, that's why it's amazing the type that you find in the Bible in the Old Testament, type and anti-type, as you go from Old to New Testament and you study it. Jesus once was in another garden praying, and he wasn't kneeling down placidly by some rock like they show in the pictures. He had fallen on his face and cried out in agony as he felt the pressure of sin weighing down upon him. The word Gethsemane means a place where oil is pressed, where the olives are pressed and crushed to bring forth the oil. And that's where he prayed. And when they came to take him, there was one there among them, remember? They grabbed his 
Uh, he had a cloth around him, they grabbed it, and he fled naked through the garden. You see, there had to be a New Testament type of the Old Testament. God puts it all together like that. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now, God knew where, he, where they were, but he was asking the question because they didn't know where they were anymore. Confusion had set in. They didn't know where they stood with God. They knew something was terribly wrong. Something was terribly different. What could it be? And yet God, in his mercy, called out to them. He didn't just end it all there. In his mercy, he still called them. Can you think of any time in your life where you were wrong? Where you were in trouble? Maybe rebellious? Whatever the case may be. And God still called to you and convicted you and called you to repentance. One thing we all have in common is the fact we were in some deep trouble and we were on our way to hell, but God still called us. And I'll never understand the depth of his mercy and his grace. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I wonder how many people today are afraid of God. We are to fear the Lord, but that means to respect Him. But there are people who are afraid of God. The reason they're afraid of Him is because they're in sin. They're in rebellion. They're in trouble. One of the first things that hit them, if I believe it was the very first thing, that awareness that came upon them, they were naked. And you know, I found one thing to be true, that the farther people are from God, the more clothes they throw off. Look at the world today. People running around like that, exposing themselves. God told people to cover up, not go around and flash their bodies like they do in Hollywood. And of course, you have these uh, all the pornography and gentlemen's clubs and all this stuff going on, and people want more and more and more and more of it. What city was that uh, somewhere they're holding a job fair? I mentioned it in one of the other. A, a uh, gentleman's club uh, chain holding a job fair? Because they're doing a booming business in this terrible economy when nobody has any money? They've got money for that. That's something I never could figure out other than that people gravitate toward evil. And so here you have a situation where God is still merciful to them. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman that thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. See, God asks questions not because... He needs to know. He already knows. But he needs for you to know. All right? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this thing, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon the, it says, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shall, shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, what's he saying here? He's giving the promise of a Savior. There will be enmity between Satan and the woman, between his seed and her seed. See, Satan has a spiritual seed. He uses people and indwells people, he and his subordinates, evil spirits, and so forth. Indwell people. And there are two kinds of people in the world, those that are lost, those that are, are under the influence of Satan, and those who have been redeemed by Jesus Christ. You can take all the religions and all the philosophies and all the ideologies. It doesn't make any difference what you want to call things. There are only two kinds of people, the saved and the lost. The lost. 